It is Friday, September 22nd. Let's talk PlayStation. So I got two main things for you that happened this past week. Now, if you didn't know or you forgot or if it was airing in the middle of the night and you couldn't see it because you were asleep, but Sony had their pre-TGS press conference. They usually have a little show right before the main event. And, well, as of recent years, TGS hasn't really been a big deal for Sony. I mean, yeah, there were some announcements that came out of it, but nothing totally major. And a lot of it is just, like trailers that we've either already seen or just kind of slightly remixed trailers but anyway we're gonna go over that entire event although i am gonna skim through a little bit of it and i mean normally when there's like a sony press conference we i'll upload a video right after the event but it was it was right in the middle of the night and it's just sony show sony's tgs shows have not been that great they're not the same as they used to be like five six years ago where you'd see major announcements come out of uh come out of tgs but there was still some really cool things so anyway we're gonna go over that and then we'll get to our other news story um but anyway let's get right into it so this is, and this is a really condensed version, by the way. I'm not going to go over every single announcement, but here, here we go. So they kick off the, um, they kick off the event with a scissor reel of games. Um, very typical, right? This is about three, four, five minutes. Who knows how long, but it's just a bunch of, you know, PlayStation games. Oh yeah, get excited for PlayStation. Look at all this stuff we have. And then they move into, um, some discussion, kind of re reminding you about the controller colors that they have. Actually, Japan's going to be getting... Uh, sort of darkish blue and a darkish black. Well, darkish black sounds weird, but it's like kind of a midnight black, I guess you could say. And they're getting those crystal dual shocks. Uh, also reminding us of that GT Sport PlayStation 4 Slim. That thing looks very cool still. Uh, they also remind us that that very hideous uh, Call of Duty World War II PS4 exists. Thank God for thank God for that. Then, then we get into a lot of trailers, and I'm not kidding you. It's just trailer after trailer after trailer. Nobody takes the stage. This is all trailers for things that we've kind of, that we've like really seen before. Whether it's Call of Duty World War II, Nino Kuni 2, Earth Defense Force uh, 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, Dynasty Warriors, Minecraft Season 2, Decidia Final Fantasy NT. I believe they show a new character for the, uh, for that though. Um, they did show a new trailer for Shadow of the Colossus on PS4. That game looks great. I'm certainly very excited for that. Also a trailer for Dragon, uh, Dragon's Crown PS4 Pro. Or Dragon's Crown Pro, they're calling it, for PS4. Uh, kind of detailing how that you can transfer your save files around everything and whatnot. That's kind of cool. The big So one of the major announcements was Final Fantasy IX is revealed for PS4. And it's uh, available right now, which is great. So one of those... Hey, here's what we got, and it's available right now thing. So if you are a big fan of Final Fantasy IX, I implore you to go download that right now. Uh, there's also So they did a few more trailers for some very Japanese-centric things, like Diabolic Lovers and Stella Stage. Uh, they move into an announcement for Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation 2. So if you're into that, you should be excited for that. Then they get into PlayStation VR stuff. So PlayStation VR actually had a pretty decent presence here. Um, they showed off Arc Park for PSVR, so... If you like your dinosaurs, and you like being up close and personal with them, you might uh, want to take a look at this. Uh, and then Gungrave for PSVR. That Now, this is pretty dope. I uh, didn't see this coming whatsoever. Gungrave getting that PlayStation VR treatment. Also, <laughs> then they go into A-Train Experience for PSVR. A train simulator. I highly doubt this will ever come stateside, uh, but... This I, am I is it weird for me to say that this kind of actually tickles my fancy a little bit? I would I would, I can get behind some train simulation for sure. Then we get into Zone of the Enders for PlayStation VR. So if you're you know if you're a Zone of the Enders fan, anything that even remotely is involved with this game, diehards love this. So I would be very intrigued to see how this turns out. But you can see the trailer right now and certainly looks interesting. Then we go into. <laughs> Nico Atsume for PSVR. If you at all are familiar with this cat app that is extremely popular for a lot of people, it's on mobile, it got turned into a movie. Well, anyway, it's getting PSVR support, which if you're into cats and stuff, um, you're probably going to be pretty pumped about that as well. Then we go into an announcement of PSVR expanding into video and music through PSN, and they kind of demo this with Japan Studio, Sony's Japan Studio getting a app coming, which kind of shows, like they show Gravity Rush 2, and uh, it's just, it looks like this sort of theater mode where you can sit down and you can look to your left and there's Toro Inoue and you can like enjoy music and whatnot. I mean, it looks cool. I, it, will, it remains to be seen how useful or cool that will be. Then they go into an uh, announcement for an, a newspaper app for PlayStation VR talking about how you can get into this journalistic mindset and, and be in the, in the field uh, reading your news. Who knows how long that app will last before it gets its support cut off. Then Nico Nico gets VR support. Uh, I know people really like that application. 
don't want to get all your anime stuff. Then they get into a trailer for Hidden Agenda. This game looks really cool. Now, this was already shown before, but this game, I, I want to highlight this again. This is one of those Play Link initiatives for Sony, where you actually play it with multiple people, and you play with smartphones. People vote to make decisions in this game. And it's by Supermassive, so if you are aware of Until Dawn, if you played Until Dawn, you know how awesome that game is. You should be aware of the fact that Hidden Agenda is by them, and it look, this game looks very cool. And then Animax for PlayStation 4. This is another app, um, anime 24-7. You know, I don't... I, I, that's pretty self-explanatory there. This is TGS after all, and people want their anime. And then some comic app for children is announced. I don't even know what the hell this was about. And then a lot more trailers. I Just way more and more trailers left and right, one after another. They really kind of throw that down you for about 20 to 25 minutes. Then Capcom gets uh, for the, the remainder of the show to talk about Monster Hunter World. Um, just detailing a little bit about the game, the collector's edition of the game. They actually showed off a special edition PlayStation 4 Pro for Monster Hunter World. This thing looks very cool. And I really feel for the people that are Monster Hunter fans because this is going to be in Japan only. You'd have to import this thing if you want it. it. It does. It looks pretty rad for sure. If you are into Monster Hunter, I know a lot of people are just foaming at the mouth to get their hands on this thing it does look pretty cool and the controller looks pretty dope as well but that's pretty ggs for sony as i said yeah it's 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 not it's not like it used to be right a lot of stuff we already seen before i and i've seen a lot of like uh outlets reporting about new trailer for this new trailer for that and like a lot of these trailers are just like yeah they're new but they're actually spliced from old trailers so there's, there's no actual new footage it's just like a remixed trailer that anybody could have done so kind of disappointing there but I really expected that uh, it is a, it's a Japanese themed show they're getting more and more Japanese centric and they're not making major announcements that you know people in the West might care about but there is there are, are, are always still one or two things that you can pull out of there and go oh yeah I'm excited about that and sure enough there are one or two of those things in there for some people like Zone of the Enders or um, Gun Grave for me, a train experience. Let's. I'm down. Give me some train experience. I'm probably gonna have to import that too. I doubt that's gonna come, come west. Uh, the anime stuff is awesome. I mean, Earth Defense Force, things like that. If you're into these games, you 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 like them, and you're probably already following this stuff. So for our last news story, you must have seen this. Very interesting indeed. So this past week, for a small amount of time, crossplay was enabled for the game Fortnite by Epic Games. This really did happen. PlayStation 4 players were playing with Xbox One players. Full-on cross-play was enabled. Epic Games quickly realized this was actually an error on their part, and then they fixed it. But for a split second, you know, I, I forget how long it was up, but people were actually in lobbies and in games, and they were playing together. Uh, then this is interesting, because it, uh, this demonstrates how easy it is for developers to actually implement this, and... The, there's been already so much developer interest in people and developers wanting this to be a feature in their games. And normally, you, you know, you, you see things where people want this in the game, people want this feature, people want these trophies, people want this DLC this, or this costume set, and sometimes you don't get it, right? And the developer will be pretty vocal about it and say, well, this takes time and money and resources or... We're not going to focus on this. We're not going to even have the time to go back and patch this error or something, right? But you got something that seems pretty monumental, like cross-network play, and it seems like most developers are actually saying it's fairly easy to do. Takes hours, takes days. We can get it up and running, you know, like that. Psyonix has said that. Um, the developers, but uh, the developers behind Ark Survival, and now Fortnite, which just happened on accident oops everybody can play together and of course it was remedy because sony is the one sony is the part uh, the party in this situation where they don't want this to be a thing so they corrected it and therefore now you cannot play fortnite with xbox one players it's just it's just funny i want to know how the error happened in the first place how does something like that just happen but I, that's that's the interesting perspective because so many people have stepped forward now and said this is actually fairly easy we can we can do this no problem and sony's still saying uh, uh no it's we don't we don't want this to happen whatsoever the damn thing is there's really not much else to add here because developers say it's easy and that could not be more proven than than what happened just recently 
uh, or the fact that many other developers have the technology working and they want to just implement implement it in their games right away. But this topic is the same every time, where which is Sony still isn't saying anything. Like the last time we had a really concrete answer from Sony about this was from Jim Ryan, from Sony's Jim Ryan, and so he, he, there's news stories left and right about. So-and-so wants to do it. So-and-so wants to do it. Phil Spencer tweets about it quite often on how he thinks it's very proactive and he, he hopes that someday it will happen. And Sony's just... Mm, it could not be more obvious that they want nothing to do with this. And not even for, like, for the long term either is the thing. Like, they're not even like considering it at this point. Um, and it's, it's, it's the same conversation we've had. Uh, I think the one thing people always seem to bring up is that back, you know, previous generation Microsoft didn't want anything to do with cross-network play whereas sony was very forward with it and they um were down with it for a lot of their games and now flip side sony's the market leader and they don't want to do it and people are kind of throwing that around like oh yeah well obviously and that's the, that's what we've discussed discussed before anyway that it's not really in their best interest to include it not because they got the most playstation 4s out there why would they allow other people to play with Xbox One users. That means they can move more hardware since there's already 60 million PlayStation 4s out there. That's that's a lot of people that own PS4s. If you got three or four people that own PS4s and one guy, you know, is thinking about buying an Xbox One or a PS4, allowing cross-play for that potential consumer means that guy can go, oh, you know what, I like the Xbox One OS better, or oh, I want to play Cuphead or something. Like, oh, sweet, well, I can go get an Xbox One X. I can still play Destiny 2 with... You know, my PS4 friends. No, Sony doesn't want this crossplay to happen. That's another PS4 sale. It's because it's not the other way around. There's not three people with Xbox Ones and one guy that wants a PS4. Sony has the most hardware out there. They so to keep them in that ecosystem would be very like fairly easy for them. Uh, so I, it's like I, I hate sympathizing with the company or being a corporate apologist, but it's pretty obvious why they don't want to do it. Uh, and if, if this doesn't tell you, if this if, the, if this past week doesn't tell you that they're just not going to do it in any you know capacity anytime soon, I don't know what does. Those are some of the news stories I want to talk about with you guys this week. So if you didn't see it, the new Let's Play, Knack 2, oh shit. What's f funny is I, <laughs> I like kept it from you, right? I tweeted about it before I uploaded it, but even still, like, like I tweeted about it, and then I uploaded it, and, and funny enough, most of you guys were like, oh, yeah, Knack 2, I already finished it, oh, yeah, I got my Platinum already, or, oh, yeah, it's an awesome game. You people love Knack, I gotta hand it to you, but it's it's great, we're coming full circle, because that was the first PS4 game that we let's play it on the channel when the PlayStation 4 launched, so it's, it's kind of just, it's come right back around, and now we're gonna enjoy ourselves with, you know, me, you, and sentient relics that form an actual being i guess what would you call knack I, it's weird to say person but he is sentient floating relics and unfortunately as i look at my work schedule right now don't have a day i can do the jack and daxter live stream <laughs> next week because i'm gonna tell you guys beforehand in an ltps when i'll do that live stream and i'll date it and every and, and time stamp it directly for you if you guys want to catch uh what uh, do it with me right because we're gonna i'm gonna do the whole game platinum it in one session still don't have a work day for that i will let you know but anyway that concludes this week's episode of let's talk playstation i'm rabideki thank you all so much for talking with me and i will see you guys next friday